so it's about time now uh, let's start with the proceedings uh, hello everyone a uh, very good evening thank you all for joining today's webinar uh, let me introduce myself first i'm vaishnavi thakur uh, a master student at the university of tokyo in the department of electrical engineering and information systems i will be the facilitator for today's webinar and i once again welcome you all so uh, today's webinar is about study and work in japan it aims to promote education in japan by motivating you young students to pursue higher studies in japan the university of tokyo india office is organizing these sessions where experts from different universities across japan will be providing the information and guidance on various programs being offered in their universities now japan has the third largest economy in the world with a huge demand for skilled professionals and not forgetting the fact that it has the highest employment rate among the other developed g7 nations but still many students choose western countries for their higher education uh, we believe that it is mainly because of the lack of awareness of the wonderful opportunities japan offers and also because of various misconceptions like japanese language requirements tuition fees living expenses job prospects and so on uh, these webinars aim to bridge that gap and provide answers to these questions now if you have any further queries please post your questions in the q and a portal and the agenda for today is as follows so first we'll have a brief overview of these sessions uh, followed by presentation of study and work life in japan by ms sakshi who is a program assistant of university of tokyo india office and then we'll have presentations by representatives of ritsumeikan university university of fukui kyushu institute of technology and kumamoto university the total time of presentation of each university is 20 minutes which is followed by a q and a session of 5 minutes now before proceeding with the webinar i would like to request all panelists to turn off their audio and video when you are not presenting also please share your university details in chat box after the presentation attendees are requested to post your questions in q and a portal and not in the chat box now without any further delay let's begin the webinar uh, i would like to invite ms sakshi the program assistant of the university of tokyo india office to give her presentation over to you ms sakshi thank you ms thakur let me share my screen right now is my screen is visible yes it is thank you very much so uh, first of all i would like to thank all of you for attending our webinar today we are so glad that you have participated in our webinars today uh, we are joined by world class japanese universities and participants from different parts of the world so thank you for taking the time to attend our webinar today uh, my name is sakshi roy and i'm the program assistant here with university of tokyo india office and today i'm going to share a brief information on overview of study and work in japan so in case if you have any questions please feel free to shoot me an email i'll be very happy to assist you with all your queries regarding study in japan so i'll start my presentation with a brief introduction to our office our office is a part of study in japan global network project in southwest asia by mex and our aim is to promote studying in japan on behalf of all japanese universities for collaboration and networking between the overseas regional offices we provide comprehensive information on japanese universities at free of cost and we organize education fairs and seminars throughout india so as of now because of current situation we are operating this activity online apart from that we also manage committees for coordinator for study in japan and our office maintains the network of indian and japanese alumni of the university of tokyo for a start why should you consider japan as your higher educational destination although there are so many reasons to choose japan but i have mentioned few of them for you number 1 is world class education standard so as all of you know japan is a world leader in the field of science the automobiles digital camera fiber optics artificial hearts and other products recognized around the world Japanese education institutions do not just develop your uh, academic abilities they also instill personal values such as proper behavior in relationships 
and earned high praise from international students. Number two, international environment. So around 3,10,000 international students from around 190 regions and countries are now studying at Japanese universities and Japanese language institutes and other schools here. So studying in Japan offers you the chance to learn about not just Japan, but the whole world. In addition, uh, more and more Japanese universities are offering degrees in English so that the need of uh, learn Japanese does not become a necessity. Um, safe, clean, beautiful country. So Japan is very safe country with a low crime rate and most people are very polite. Japan has simplified student Im immigration procedures. On the top of it, Japan is also the home of some of the world's leading tech and car companies such as Sony, Nikon, Canon, Hitachi, Toyota, Honda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, etc. Also, many of you may not know that just going to the toilet in Japan can be a technological experience. So you will live a decaded life in Japan. Since 1949, Japan is the first and the most noble laureate country in Asia. So as of now in Japan, there has been total 28 Nobel Prize winners. The mentioned 10 of them are from the University of Tokyo. Now, the rich nature and culture. Japan is known for its rich natural environment and four beautiful seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. So I must tell you that Japan has it all. Bustling cities with cutting edge fashion and technology, snow-capped peaks, tropical beaches, and 23 world heritage sites. The world-renowned cuisines, hot springs, cherry blossom, and the summer festivals. So you'll get an extraordinary experience uh, while studying in Japan. Okay, so Japanese universities have a global reputation for excellence and innovation with over 10 institutions ranked in the world top 200 by the QS World Rankings 2021. The University of Tokyo is ranked number one in Japan and 24th in the world. Also several other Japanese universities which are participating in our webinar series are ranked among the top 500. As you can see in the table, um, there are 80 plus national universities and 90 plus public universities and approximately 600 plus private universities offering variety of programs in Japan. And many Japanese universities offer courses in English in various disciplines and do have the world's best research facilities. Um, so this is the basic information about the academic fees. Japanese universities has lower tuition fees as compared to other Western countries, uh, such as uh, US or UK. The schools in Japan charge an admission fee in the first year and the tuition fee and the some other smaller fee as per semester wise. In Japan, tuition fees are same for local and foreign students. So if you ask me in Indian rupees, fee at the national universities approximate uh, 6 lakhs per year, whereas you'll have to pay uh, approximately 18 lakhs in US public universities. And in Japan, you can apply for tuition fee exemption as well. On the top of the tuition fees, uh, you'll probably need about eight, uh, 850 US dollars per month to cover your living expenses, such as accommodation, food and travel, etc. So if you study in a smaller city where the accommodation and travel costs are low, you might get a buy on less. But in Tokyo, it is easy to spend much more, especially if you live in uh, your own apartment. Um, student accommodation can be a bit costly in Tokyo, considering the size and the standard that you get. So yeah, cost may vary by metropolitan and rural areas. Okay, so in Japan, bachelors last for four years and it will take two years to complete a master's degree in Japan and minimum of three years to earn a PhD degree. So this number may vary depending on the faculty, like for medicine and veterinary sciences, it will take four years. Uh, and you can enroll in a course to earn a degree as a regular student, or if you're not studying to earn a degree, you can enroll as a research for returning or audit student. So most Japanese universities allow two intakes for spring semester application process starts from September, October, and for the autumn semester application process starts from March to April.
This is just an example. I have included uh, the application schedule and procedure for Japanese universities. Although it may vary in few uh, universities, so please check their official website before applying to any undergraduate or graduate school in Japan. And these are the basic documents that are required when applying to any program offered in uh, offered in English by Japanese universities. So these are the basically steps you should follow when preparing for the application to graduate schools. So in Japan, most of the graduate uh, school programs, both non-degree students and degree-seeking students require a research plan or proposal. So firstly, you'll have to prepare the research uh, plan. Then you'll have to find the professor in your field of interest. And then you will have to contact them, send them a letter of uh, recommendation from your current or previous academic advisor, discuss your research plans and obtain consent to be accepted into their laboratory before your enrollment. So once you're sure this is the right program for you, submit the application form, including the required document. So most of the students keep asking us, uh, what should they include in their research plan? So uh, I have included these points uh, uh, in my presentation today. In the research plan, uh, you can state the title, objective, research questions or background, methodology, conclusion, and references. Um, there are two types of financial assistance for international students, scholarship and tuition exemption or reduction by each university. So most of the scholarship becomes available after you arrive in Japan uh, with a recommendation from your school. However, there are scholarship that you can apply for before coming into Japan. So Japanese government makes scholarship, you can apply at the embassy. The ASO Student Exchange Support Program is for the exchange students coming to Japan based on the exchange agreements between universities. So please check your, uh, with, check your home university for available programs. <clears throat> Uh, and after admission or enrollment in Japanese universities, student may apply for mixed, uh, mixed honor scholarship or scholarship by private foundations and local government. So most Japanese universities have tuition uh, exemption or the reduction scheme international students can apply for. <clears throat> Employment in Japan. International students are allowed to work part-time in Japan up to 28 hours a week. About 75% of international students are working part-time and the average monthly income is about uh, 59,000 uh, Japanese yen, which is equivalent to about $530. Japan is hiring more and more uh, talented international students, regardless of their nationality. So there are many job fairs, specially organized for international students in Japan. And each university has their career advising uh, centers to help students to find a job. You can also find an internship for yourself through job search websites and through dedicated inter internship agents. Okay, so vast employment opportunities are one of the pull factor for international students. For those who is wondering about employment in uh, Japanese government, encourage is encouraging international students to stay and work in Japan after graduation. So as you can see in this graph, the steady job situation has been over uh, 90% in 2011 in Japan. During 2019 to 20 academic year, the rate, rate reached 97.8 percent, which means nearly all the students uh, were able to get a job upon graduation. Okay, so here the above graph is indicating that uh, the 10 years, in the past 10 years, the number of foreign students employed in Japan increased from 9,584 in 2009 to 25,942 in 2018. And the below graph is indicating that uh, just under 20% of foreign students started their career with manufacturing companies, while over 80% decided to work for non-manufacturing companies. So there should be no doubt if you want to uh, study in Japan or if you decide to leave Japan after you have finished your studies, your experience and skill will be highly considered by potential employers. 
not only uh, in Japan but all over the world. The Japanese education will surely open many doors to you. So, Japanese government is also pushing an internationalized agenda in a higher education and is more than ever willing to open up to increase immigration for international students. So, now it's time to conclude my presentation. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. If anyone who like more information or has questions, please feel free to contact us at this mail address. We would be very happy to assist you. Please visit our website for more study in uh, Japan webinar updates. You can scan this QR to visit our website. And you can also like and follow our Facebook page for more information. Uh, lastly, I would like to wish you uh, good luck uh, with your career. Please enjoy today's session. And please don't forget to register for our upcoming webinars. We hope you will enjoy the experience and will receive a beneficial information from our webinars. Thank you very much once again. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sakshi. It was a really comprehensive presentation. You have covered all the aspects, starting from what students have to uh, mention in their research plan, research idea. It was really comprehensive, and I hope students have noted on all the points too. So now we'll move on with the uh, university presentations, uh, as shown in the agenda slide. So first we have uh, Ritsumeikan University. It is known as one of the Western Japan's uh, four leading private universities. And it is also well known for its international relations and science and engineering departments. The university has exchange programs with some of the prominent schools throughout the world. And another interesting thing I found about the university is its name. The meaning of Ritsumeikan means it's a place of uh, where we, uh, to establish one's mission in life. So with this, I would uh, like to invite Ms. Priyanka, the Deputy Director and Manager of the Ritzmeckin University India office to share her presentation. Over to you, Ms. Priyanka. Thank you very much, Ms. Thakur. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining the session. Uh, to start with, I'll just introduce myself. I've been working with Ritzmeckin uh, University India office for last 11 years. And my work has been to help Indian students who want to study in Ritsumikan to help them and guide them. Uh, so I've already left my details in the chat column and I will show the presentation and I'll be happy to support and guide you uh, for any query that you have. So I'll start the presentation. Okay, so this, you know, this is so this big R in Japan is very popular by the name of Ritsumikan University. Uh, so let's understand what, why study in Japan and why at Ritsumikan. So we've already seen the weather, but some of the picture from the university, when I talk about spring, summer, fall, and winter. So where are we located? We're located in Kansai region. That's about two hours, 30 minutes from Tokyo. Uh, so it's connected by plane, by train, by bus. So we have four campuses in three different locations. We have campus in Shiga, and we have campus in Kyoto, and we have campus in Osaka. So Kyoto as an area is very historical, nostalgic, and student-friendly. Shiga, we have an engineering campus. It's very rich in nature, industrial, and relaxed. So these are some of the pictures. And Osaka. Osaka as an area is vibrant, welcoming, and commercial hub. So talking about Kyoto, uh, Kyoto has 10% of the student population. So as a city, if any student who's coming to Kyoto for the first time, it's very, very comforting uh, seeing so many universities, so many students, and to Kyoto is very popular for tourists as well. We ranked uh, number one uh, in terms of safety, Kyoto, Osaka, Kobe. Talking about the university, we were founded in 1900. We are uh, 21 years old. We have 16 undergraduate colleges, 21 graduate schools. We are part of top global university Japan with 36,000 plus students and one lakh applicant. That's part of top global university project. Talking about the research, uh, scientific research grant aid, we've been ranked number one. 
with a research funding of 1.3 billion yen. We rank number one in Western Japan with 139 foreign faculties. In terms of the foreign students, we have 2,450 foreign students from 71 countries and regions. We have a partner institution with 461 universities and institutions in 68 countries and regions. So talking about the study abroad opportunities, so the student can do uh, a semester to a um, year, depending upon the program, and they can choose from any of a partner institution all over the world. So this is our one of our campus that's located in Kyoto. We have our international relation program. This is a picture of Kinogasa campus, Kyoto. This is a picture of our science engineering campus. It's a Biwako Kusatsu campus in Shiga. This is a complete engineering campus. Uh, this is a picture of Osaka Ibaraki campus. We have a policy science and global liberal arts program. Uh, so during the COVID uh, situation last year, every child was supported by the university, by the government and the classes were conducted online and still some of the students are still taking classes online from some part of the world if they're not able to travel. So this was last year when students uh, came back on campus. So we have uh, clubs in circle, we have 430 clubs in circle, so child can choose from any of them. So part-time job, uh, every child is allowed to work for 28 hours per week. They can get the work permit at the airport and they can work on campus, off campus, uh, different uh, part-time jobs are available. Student support, we have a student support available. So whether a child needs support for career planning, academic guidance, visa application, housing and accommodation support, study abroad support, and on-campus medical support is available. So accommodation, so we have on and off campus accommodation that belongs to Ritsumi Camp. So our off-campus accommodation is maximum of 15 minutes uh, walk away. So the child can walk or can take a bicycle. And uh, th these are some of the pictures of our accommodation dormitories. So there's a strong peer support. We have 3,920 student staff. Uh, so the child once enter Japan to settling in the university in the accommodation, the student support plays a big support uh, to the new student and they give complete support, yes. So career planning uh, support is available. So whether the child wants to work in Japan after the program or whether the child wants to do their master's in Japan or anywhere in the world, they can contact the career support office and can get the information relating to that. So see, these are some of the uh, major employers and some of the graduate schools in, J in Japan and of course, all over the world as well. So what are the key features? Uh, so the scholarship, we have 20%, 50%, and 100% tuition reduction that is available. Accommodation is one of the key features I've already mentioned. The student dorm is available. Online interview, so the complete application is online. You don't have to send anything by courier. Everything is online and English only. So the child, no Japanese is required for the admission and study abroad opportunities are available as already mentioned. So uh, I'll be sharing our English medium undergraduate program. And to talk about them, we have two collaborative degree and three single degrees. So our first collaborative degree uh, is GLA. It's a collaboration with Australian National University. And uh, I'll be sharing more details about that. And the second is a joint degree with American University. And the program is Bachelor of Arts in Global International Relation. And the single degree uh, that we have, the first is Global Study Major, GS Major, that's Bachelor of Arts in International Relation. And CRPS Major, Bachelor of Arts in Policy Science and ISSC course, Bachelors of Engineering. All the programs are for four year full-time, fully taught in English. 
to share more about the first program uh, that's with Australian National University where the child will be getting two degrees. So the child will get a graduate uh, graduation degree from Mitsumikan Japan and ANU Australia. So, uh, so some of the key features, so we have April and September intake, it's located in Osaka Ibaraki campus, and some of the key features uh, for the program uh, are mentioned, social change with AI, evolution of market economy, design and society, knowledge and innovation, contemporary Japan, politics and government, international relation and security, conflict and peace building, history and cultural identity and many other. So this is global liberal arts. So this is about ANU Australia. It's number one, 29 in the world, eighth in the world of politics and international studies. So why GLA? It's a world-class education. You get an opportunity to study in both university, truly international and diverse environment and a new liberal arts or for the new era. So the, some of the key career paths that I can mention, and of course there are many others uh, that are there, government agency, consultancy firm, business and trade organization, development and aid organization, media agencies, universities, and research organization, and many others. So this, these are some of the pictures of the ANU campus. So talking about a joint degree with American University, the second program, so, um, so some of the key features for the same as US-Japan relation, global and comparative governors, peace, global security, conflict resolution, identity, race, gender and culture, global IR and Sakura scholars. These, this is a joint degree program that we have, BA in global international relation. So this is some of, some of the information about American University. So the third program that is fully taught in Japan, it's global study major. And uh, one of the key feature that I can mention that uh, we're the only member uh, who, is part, who has a full, we have a full membership of APSIA, we're the only university who have this membership in Japan. And there are other members all over the world who have this uh, full accreditation uh, from the society are some of the Ivy Leagues like Columbia, Harvard, Yale, and American University as well. So uh, it's BA in international relation. It's a four year program, April and September intake in Kinugasa campus, Kyoto. And the keywords for the program would be international law, peace and conflict studies, security study, international human rights, the United Nations, government, global environmental issues, gender issues, race and ethnicity and global media and many others. So what are the features uh, for this program? So the features are, it has 50% of international students, 50% of Japanese students. Many professors have experience and career in industry. They have worked for years in United Nations, World Bank and NGOs and many others. And now they are teaching at Ritsumikan uh, for this program. So the child gets an opportunity to learn Japanese language as part of the program. There's six credit of Japanese language classes um, and the student with a high Japanese language proficiency can take courses offered in Japanese as well. So the fourth program, it's an Osaka Ibaraki campus. It's community and regional policy study major. So it's a four year full-time program, September intake. And one of the key feature is we have MEX scholarship available for this program with a full tuition reduction, full living expense for four years and a year once going to Japan and once coming back. So the some of the key words uh, that I can share about the program is urban planning for sustainable city, commu community safety, development economics, environmental policy, global public policy, social welfare policy, revitalization of rural areas and many others. So this program has many fieldwork projects. So this is a picture of one of the Indian student. Uh, she uh, went to Thailand for her fieldwork project. And uh, yes, and many of the other children, they were able to go to different parts of the world um, with this program. Yes. The last program is our information system science and engineering course. It's in Shiga campus. 
uh, it's an engineering program, a bachelor's of engineering, four year full time, April intake. Uh, the keyword is IoT, business intelligence, data science, artificial intelligence, robot technology, human interface, effective engineering, digital human, virtual reality, advanced computer graphics. So these are some of the keywords, and uh, the child will be getting a degree, bachelor's of engineering. So some of the uh, career path that I can talk for this program would be big data analyst, global ICT support specialist, e-government system engineer, smart city engineer, and digital humanities curators. So for all the programs, uh, I've already shared um, online application, no Japanese proficiency is required for admission, and multiple application period. So now I'll be sharing the application period and how to apply. So first is how to apply. I've already shared this link in the chat column. Uh, you can download and you know our, and consult the application handbook. Our application handbook include all the information about how to apply and uh, the paperwork that you have to prepare that I'll be sharing. So you activate your Ritsume account, upload all the documents and pay the application fee depending upon your application dates. So the documents required are very simple. You need a passport copy. Uh, if you're applying for a, a double, you know, you're applying for a collaborative degree, then you need an IELTS or a TOEFL or Duolingo. Otherwise, you can get a waiver for any of a single degree. You just need to give a letter from the school and the format is mentioned in the application handbook. Uh, we need recommendation letter. Um, again, the format is mentioned in the application handbook. Academic transcript, you can give your 11th, 12th and the predicted scores. If you wish to give your 10th um, transcript as well, you can give that as well. Essays, uh, so essays, the topics are mentioned in the application handbook. You can start preparing even before the dates, um, uh, before the application starts and you can prepare everything. And once the application starts, you can just submit it uh, and uh, you will be done. And then we need a certificate for high school graduation. Again, the handbook has the uh, format for the same. Uh, talking about the intake, uh, when I talk about our uh, program, Glo Global Liberal Arts, we have two intakes, April and September. So if you're planning to go for September intake, our application starts in October for next year. For uh, October, it will start. And then we have a second application period in December and then February. So these are the application period for September and April. If you're um, keen on going for a joint degree with American University program, um, we have our application starting in August for going for next, coming uh, April. Yeah. But this is only if you've cleared your class 12 and for next year, the dates will be similar. So then uh, the third program, College of International Relation, if you're keen on April or September intake, for September intake, uh, we have our application starting in December and then in February. And same for College of Policy Science, the application starts in December and February. You can apply together as well because the application period is the same. And the last is a College of Information Science and Engineering for the students who have already cleared uh, the class 12. Uh, they can still apply for next year, April. We still have application period um, open for them. That's August 25th for going in April. And the fee structure. So when I talk about the fee structure, for most of our program, the fee structure would be between nine uh, to start with between eight, eight lakhs starting and uh, going till maximum 15 lakhs for a, a new program. And we have uh, a living expense of eight to nine lakhs with many other uh, living expense scholarship that is available. So this fee structure does not include the scholarship. So we have a minimum of 20% student, 20% uh, tuition reduction that is available for every child who gets admission in Ritsumekan to 50 and 100. And many living expense scholarship and many other scholarships that are available. If you're keen on our master's and PhD program, I've already shared the email ID and the link. International relation, policy science, economics, science and engineering, information science and engineering, and life sciences are the program. 
So if you want to contact me, my email ID is here, newdelhi at st.ritsume.ac.jp. And my mobile number is also there. I have left all the details at the, in the chat column, so you can take it from there. So thank you. I'll be sharing a very quick, uh, small video, and then we can do the question answers. That you'd never find I know something about the state of mind I've got the dreamer in me Thank you, I'm sorry to interrupt But we cannot uh, see your screen So can you please share it again? We can only listen to the audio Stars shine bright on when you Sorry, you can't see the video or you can't hear it? Uh, we can uh, we can hear it, but uh, we cannot see the video. Okay, I'll start again. I'm so yes. sorry. Can you see now? Okay. Is it okay? No, oh, no, no. We cannot see the video. Okay, I'm so sorry. One second. Oh, yes. Now we can see your screen. Take my hand and I'll be your guide I'll take you places that you'd never find I know something about the state of mind I've got the dreamer in me Roses bloom and the sun will shine your troubles in the world behind. Stars shine bright away you free your mind. I've got the dreamer in me. And when we reach the destination, you will see. Thank you very much. Over to Ms. Thakur. Yes, thank you, Ms. Priyanka. Like always, your presentation is very detailed and uh, thank you very much. So we can look into the Q&A session. So uh, do you want me to assist in the questions? Is it, okay, I'll, I'll, I can select some questions. Um, there's a student who wants to know if there's any limitation on the number of students. So I see, I saw that you have mentioned in your presentation that there are around 50% international students and 50% Japanese students. So is there any, uh, like usually what is the intake of international students every year? Uh, so that, that was only for that program, international relation, but most of the program, it's a huge intake. We have 100 seats available. 
uh, including April and September. So I, uh, I will suggest, please don't worry, please apply. And uh, yes, you should be able to get through with good yes. scholarship. Thank you. Yes. And uh, so there is a student who asked how to apply for college fees exemption, but that has been already discussed in the presentation. So, uh, and, and what about law courses? Is there any, are there any courses in law and rhythmic? Um, I'm so sorry, we don't have the law program, but if you see our GLA program, it has some, you know, one or two uh, added, uh, you know, program so you can go through that if that suits your requirement thank you very much yes and uh, so the eligibility for admission and masters uh, yeah so it again depends on the program so in the chat column i have shared the email id of a masters and phd department uh, i will suggest if you can put the email and uh, of course i'm available if you have any other if you're not able to get the answer, I'll be able to help you. Thank you. Yes. And, and, and the all, most of the questions are about uh, the programs, availability of programs, but I think I can get those from the links posted and also they can contact you. And what about the MBA program? Uh, so how, uh, how is the MBA program in Ritsumaikan University? Uh, I'm so sorry, we don't have MBA program, uh, but the program that I mentioned are International Relation, Policy, Science. Uh, so these are the program and GLA, uh, Liberal Arts and Engineering. If, if you're interested or keen for any of them, you can see the link that is mentioned. Thank you. Yes. Um... Yes, I think that's all we can end our Q&A session here. And thank you so much, Ms. Priyanka, for assisting with the questions. So if there are any other queries, like if the pro program is available or this, how to apply for the scholarship. So I see many questions uh, where a student asks, like, what, what is a roadmap or how do I upload? So I think Ms. Priyanka has already shared her details in the chat box. So please do contact her. And thank you, Ms. Priyanka. So uh, let's move on with the next university. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have the agenda slide, please? Okay, so next we have uh, University of Fukui. So the it is one of the top national universities and uh, uh, it also has various exchange agreements with uh, various universities. Uh, I invite Mr. Akashi, who is a vice president of international affairs to start his presentation. Hello, um, my name is Yukio Akashi. Uh, thank you for, uh, Ms. Sakar, uh, thank you for introduction. I'm the Vice President for International Affairs. Can you see my presentation or not yet? Uh, yes, we can see your presentation. Can you please uh, change it to presentation mode? Sure. Sorry. Anyway, so let me. Okay, so I, I'm gonna use this as is. So to, here is today's agenda. Uh, first of all, I will introduce uh, University of Fukui. Second, uh, Professor Asper Joel Takura will introduce School of Engineering. Finally, Professor Hosoya will introduce School of Global and Community Studies. So let me uh, first introduce University of Fukui. Uh, I believe that University of Fukui is the best institute for international students to study in Japan because first, our university is located in a regional compact city of Fukui, so international students can live safely and comfortably in Fukui while minimizing uh, living exp expenses. Second, Fukui is fully packed with uh, Japanese culture. We have many cultural heritages in Fukui that are less crowded than those in Kyoto, for instance. Therefore, you can enjoy rich Japanese culture efficiently in Japan, um, in Fukui. Can you see my presentation, right? 
Okay. We have three campuses. Uh, there are in Bunkyo, Matsuoka, and Tsuruga in Fukui. Bunkyo is the main campus. Matsuoka is for School of Medical Sciences. Tsuruga is for the Research Institute of Nuclear Engineering. There are four undergraduate programs. International student programs are available in School of Engin Engineering and School of Global and Community Studies. We also have exchange programs for School of Education, School of Engineering, and School of Global and Community Studies. We also have four graduate programs Programs for international students are available in Graduate School of Professional Development of Teachers, Graduate School of Medical Sciences, Graduate School of Engineering, and a Professional Graduate School of Global and Community Management. We have about 5,000 students and 600 faculty members, the ratio of faculty members to students is high enough to provide the excellent quality of education. We have international partnerships with 169 universities and research institutions in 39 countries and areas in the world. We had about 240 inbound students at the end of the academic year of 2019. Uh, I expect we can regain the same number of students in the post COVID-19. We have now 17 alumni branches in the world. We have good relationships. Finally, uh, but the most importantly, uh, we are proud of, uh, we are proud that our student employment rate has been the highest in Japan for 14 years. The job retention rate is also the highest in Japan. This is the evidence that we provide the best placement services and the career education for students. So now we look forward to seeing you on our campuses in the near future. Thank you for your attention. Um, Asbar Sensei, please do next presentation. Asbar Sensei? Yes, I'm um, sorry. Your turn. OK, thank you very much. Sure. Can you see my slides? Yes, very well. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Akashi. Uh, hmm? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, Jovel uh, Tiasabar of uh, University of Fukui. Uh, for about seven minutes, I'm going to talk about the School of Engineering and the Graduate School of Engineering of which I belong. A while ago, Akashi Sensei already explained the location of uh, Fukui Prefecture. Uh, it is easily accessible from uh, Japanese major cities such as Kyoto, Osaka, Nagoya, and Tokyo. Let me just add some uh, places of interest in Fukui, such as uh, the Ejizen on the Castle which is nicknamed the uh, castle in the sky, to Jimbo Cliffs, which, which are actually rock formations sculpted millions of years ago by erosion and the waves from the Japan Sea, Ichijodani, which is a castle town of 15th century warlords samurai, and uh, Fukui Station, which is an open air exhibit of Fukui dinosaur. Uh, actually, uh, Fukui Prefecture is home to Japan's most prominent uh, dinosaur fossil uh, discovery site. As for the University of Fukui, again, we have uh, three campuses. 
uh, Matsuoka, Matsuoka campus uh, housing the medical sciences, uh, Bungyo campus housing the education, engineering, uh, and global and community studies, and uh, the Tsuruga campus housing the Research Institute of uh, Nuclear Engineering. So all in all, we have uh, four schools of undergraduate programs, namely education, medical sciences, uh, engineering, and uh, global and community studies. Well, under the School of Engineering, we have uh, five departments, namely um, architecture and civil engineering, electrical, electronic, and computer engineering, uh, mechanical and system engineering, applied physics, uh, material science, and uh, biotechnology. As the largest school of engineering on the west coast of Japan, we offer a wide range of courses and programs, as uh, you can see here. Uh, as for the Graduate School of Engineering, we have, of course, of course a master's program and uh, doctoral program, but additionally, we have uh, the GEPIS or a Global Engineering Program for International Students, which is a two-year uh, master's program, and uh, GEP for R&D or Global Engineering Program for Research and Development, which is a uh, three-year uh, doctoral program uh, for international students. Uh, both programs, provide opportunities for inter international students to study advanced engineering fields with English as the primary language of uh, instruction. For the last part of my presentation, I will talk about my uh, laboratory, the Electron Device Laboratory. In our laboratory, we are working with uh, gallium nitride-based uh, devices, algen and hemp or aluminum gallium nitride, gallium nitride high electron mobility transistor. Compared uh, with uh, conventional silicon devices, because of the desirable intrinsic properties of gallium nitride, uh, shorter devices with lower resistances can be uh, fabricated, which leads to lower energy loss for these devices. In simple words, we can say that gallium nitride based devices are energy efficient and the earth-friendly uh, devices. Our laboratory is consistently one of the top institutions in Japan in terms of uh, published papers on algae and hemp. And uh, as can be seen from this graph showing the leading Japanese institutions and their uh, number of published papers about algae and hemp for the uh, past three years. We have also international collaborations, of course, including a partnership with uh, IIT Rorki. And this is one of our latest publications with I I IIT Rorki and the uh, Nobel Laureate Amano Census Group in the Nagoya University. Uh, lastly, I would like to show uh, some facts and figures about uh, Fukui Prefecture and University of Fukui as well. Uh, according to the results of the National Happiness Index, uh, Fukui Prefecture has remained as uh, Japan's uh, happiest prefecture. Uh, meanwhile, the University of Fukui has overall satisfaction rating of over 90% according to our uh, own exchange students. As for the career path, half of our foreign student graduates either pursues higher education or uh, settles for uh, a job in Japan. Uh, this ends uh, my presentation and uh, thank you all for uh, listening. Okay, uh, so if I may continue on with uh, my presentation, I'm Yuhei Hosoya from the uh, Global and Community Studies. Yes, sir, please, please carry on. Okay, I'm happy to be here again uh, since last week uh, to meet our friends from India. Uh, okay, let me just share this uh, video with you. We, we are at the, the smallest school um, uh, among the four schools. Uh, we're on the social and uh, humanities and social science side. Uh, but 
We're the smallest and newest school, but we offer a very special opportunity to students who are seeking to be, let's say, global and local at the same time, as the name of the school suggests, uh, global and community or local uh, studies. So if you put this into one word, you get the buzzword global. And I would say that is what our school is all about. And there's a short video which uh, explains that um, in, a, in the form of a dialogue uh, between two of our international students. What you're seeing now is our, the top page of our university's homepage. I'll, I'll share the, uh, the links uh, later on in the chat column. As you see, we have four schools, and, and this is our school. We go into our schools page, and uh, here, scrolling down, we have this short video, which is called GCS Crosstalk. Uh, part one of uh, the video is uh, about for about six minutes. I'd like to be to have the time to show all of it to you, which I don't have today. So I'll just show you the first few seconds of it. Okay, you already see the keyword here, global. Okay. Well, sorry, I'll have to stop there uh, for now, uh, but I hope you can come back to uh, see the whole uh, clip, which is for about six minutes. Um, uh, so, uh, again, to, to explain in a nutshell, uh, as I think uh, it's Meikan University, which uh, uh, made a very uh, excellent presentation, uh, you, you can see there are quite a few institutions or universities which run very good global or IR programs, if you like, international studies programs, uh, and so on. And again, many other universities and faculties uh, where you can pursue studies on local, regional, or community issues, let's say. But I would say we at uh, GCS in Fukui University is probably the only institution of higher learning in Japan, or maybe even around the world. Uh, we cover both those areas, but we also actively try to combine the two areas uh, into a single overall program. And, and that is exactly what fits well the concept uh, of glo localization or global, if you like. To be more specific, uh, we are developing an active network of relations with uh, different stakeholders in the local community, such as companies, the local governments, public corporations, and, and other groups. And that's with a view to taking the lead in the internationalization of the region. Uh, we have a flagship program which is designed for that very purpose, and it's called PBL, which stands for Project-Based Learning. Uh, all of our students uh, take part in this course, which is mandatory. Uh, it takes them out of the classroom, uh, and, and that's to create a partnership with one or a number of local stakeholders. Uh, more often than not, they, these are local companies, and the students work in teams, and they try to identify practical problems, uh, discussing it with the stakeholder. They set projects, and they work together towards achieving concrete results and, and outcomes in one semester or two semesters sometimes. Uh, for more information on that program and other uh, programs of our school, I would uh, uh, just lead you to uh, back to the uh, university's uh, homepage. Just hold on. So that was our uh, top page of our university's website. And we scroll further down, and we have this university guide here, um, which uh, gives you uh, most of the information you may require. Uh, just go into page, the, these pink pages, uh, 
gives you in compact form, uh, there are four pages altogether, what our school has to offer. I won't go into details right now, but just so you know where you can find them. So coming back to this page, I would just scroll up a little bit to admissions. And in case you are kind enough to take uh, interest in, to the extent of applying to our schools, the uh, admission guidelines and forms are found here. The School of Global and Community Studies. And uh, here is the guidelines and procedures for people like yourselves, uh, students uh, who are presently residing outside of Japan. And again, I won't go into details right now, but uh, just to let you know, uh, the application submission period runs from will run from September 30th to 8th October, and that is for enrollment starting uh, next spring, April 1st. And there are similar exams uh, which are given by the other schools, specifically the School of Engineering. Professors Akashi and Joel, I think, referred to these two specific programs. These are at the graduate level. GEPIS and GEP for R&D. Okay, I think I'll stop here and I'll, I'll just copy paste uh, in the chat column uh, a list of the URLs that I referred to uh, plus a few other links which I think may of it be of interest to you. Okay, so thank you for your kind attention and uh, I'll be very happy to answer any questions that you may have and uh, please think of asking your questions uh, if you're interested in the engineering school to Professor Akashi and Joel. Okay, again, thank you very much. So back to you, Ms. Taku. Uh, yes, Professor, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, we can quickly have a few q and A's. I mean, a few questions. So um, I found that uh like for example for japanese based programs what is the level of japanese uh, required for, to get admission to university of fukui uh well if i may answer that from the point of view of my school we have uh well uh let's say uh we have a focus on international students who are willing to take up uh, the Japanese language uh, and although we do offer a good number of courses in, in English uh, we, we do have a, a bulk of uh, courses taught in the Japanese language as well so uh, I would say um, it's open to both uh, types of students uh, who wish to study more in Japanese more in English and, and, and in both actually and so the expectation is uh, you don't have to have a proficiency at a high level at entrance level in Japanese but mm -hmm. I think you will be expected to, to uh, improve on it once you join a, a university. Yes, yes, thank you and professor. Colleagues from the engineering school may wish to answer as well. I think they have. Uh, we have a few questions in engineering field too, so I think we can ask them. Uh, for example, are there any opportunities for architecture or civil engineering in the University of Fukui? Okay, let let me because I let let me respond to that question because yes. I belong to the Department of Architecture and Civil Engineering. Um, it is possible for the student to pursue postdoc mm -hmm. in civil and engineering, uh, but uh, depending on what uh, field, specific field uh, you are interested in, uh, be, uh, most of the case we have to, first of all, we have to find funding to hire postdoc to pay enough. So uh, let us know if you are interested in our university's um, civil engineering. Thank you. Yes. And uh, uh, is there any requirement of EJU for the undergraduate program in engineering? I'm sorry. So we, uh, you're talking about Japanese just... level? Mm. Uh, yes. Like, what are the requirements for the students? Like, do they have to give TOEFL, IELTS, or GRE? So, is there any such requirement for undergraduate program? 
graduate program, we have uh, also English program as well. So we don't, we don't have any, and you don't have to use it, uh, Japanese only. So, but um, we have, you have to pass uh, entrance examination. So that mm -hmm. is a requirement. Yes, yes. So uh, are the undergraduate programs, uh, are they totally in English or do students have to have some Japanese language uh, um, proficiency? In School of Engineering, uh, we, for undergraduate students, we have only Japanese program. We do only have exchange program, which is a short time, um, you know, exchange. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, we have English program as well okay. for exchange program. Yes, yes. Thank okay. you, Professor. And uh, are there any science programs, like, for example, courses in astronomy or physics? So are there any such programs in the University of Kui? I don't think so, but uh, uh, Aspar Sensei, how about you? you? Could you could you explain? Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, you were asking about uh, physics, right? I think we have... Uh... I'm going to share my uh, my screen again. Okay. Sure. okay. I think for the Department of Applied Physics, we have here. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Sorry. What's your question again? I'm sorry. Uh, so from the Department of Science, do we have any programs in physics or astronomy, such, uh, any such programs in the university? Uh, we have uh, programs in physics, but I'm not aware of any programs in astronomy. Okay, okay. I think, yes, thank you, sir. And also, uh, there's a question about the scholarships that are offered in Fukui University. So besides the popular scholarships like MIXT and JASO, are there any other uh, university scholarships? Uh, in offer to the students? Yes, uh, we do have scholarship for students and also we have um, uh, local companies also provide uh, scholarship for international students. But depending on how much you need. So that's, that is a question actually. Yes, yes. Uh, and um... So there's a question to Professor Joel. So are there any IT-based programs too? Yes, we have. We do have actually. Uh, in our in Department of Electrical Electronics and Computer Engineering, we have uh, the computer science course, which uh, which has uh, information technology and AI and uh, related courses. Yes. yes. Um, yes, I think almost all the questions are similar to this. So what are the, are there any programs in the robotics, like opportunities in robotics field? Akashi Sensei, could you kindly answer the question? Uh, Markum san can you help me? Yes, we have a uh, robotics courses as well. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, Fuki University, we have like various representatives and almost all the answer questions are being answered by the uh, IAD office. So I really appreciate for you, like for actively answering all the questions. So we can end our Q&A session here and uh, we can proceed to the next university. Can I have the agenda slide, please? Thank you. Thank you. So uh, next we have. Yes, me? Uh, yes. Uh, so next we have the uh, Kyushu Institute of Technology. It is also one of the top leading national universities. Today in total, we have around three national universities and one private university is presenting. So uh, in continuation, we have a Kyushu Institute of Technology. This is located in Fukuoka Prefecture on the island of Kyushu. So in more than 100 years of its inauguration, it is dedicated to uh, education and research in the fields of science and technology. To give more details about the university, I invite Professor Shibata, the professor in the Graduate School of Life Science and Systems, 
systems engineering. Uh, over to you, Professor. Yes, thank you very much, Mia and Ms. Taka. Uh, nice to meet you, everybody. So I'm Tomohiro Shibata, and uh, so uh, I have, so actually I'm a professor of uh, graduate school of uh, life science and systems engineering, and I'm also managing a mixed scholarship course uh, called uh, Global AAR Advanced Assistive Robotics course. And also today, so I mean, I mean maybe I don't have a time, but I try to find that, find that some time to introduce my laboratory also. But anyway, so I have many, uh, you know, so titles here and please uh, watch this. So I'm a governing council additional member of the Robotics Society, Robotics Society of India. And actually uh, I, as, as an agent uh, from uh, the Robotics Society of Japan, I uh, collaboratively uh, founded the uh, so Indian Robotics Society. So uh, since 2007, I uh, you know started visiting. So I have I have visited a lot, almost every year. So India, and mostly uh, IITs. And uh, this is a picture from IIT Kampo, and he's he's been my old very good friend. And uh, so my student also visited IITs, and also they also came to Japan. And actually, at the time I lived in Nara. So this is the world largest level uh, wooden, wooden house for the uh, you know, very big Buddha. And uh, so he's a Professor Behela of IIT Kampo and he's a really, uh, very high level uh, priest, uh, priest of uh, Hindi. And he, uh, I visited him to, you know, so to, to uh, I show him around Nara at the time. Okay, so, uh, and this is a funny, you know, so many of you know this. I was, I and my also student, at the time he was my student and we were both colored. So, and we celebrated the holy. And for, for unfortunately, this is the era uh, of COVID-19. And I hope you have been all safe and good. And uh, unfortunately, you know, so I, I think you had a uh, holy, but uh, <laughs> it's a bit dangerous. So please uh, take care of yourself. Okay, and as I told you, so I, I, ha I have been a member of the Robotics Society of Japan, and this year I already gave a, a lecture uh, titled Robots for Assisted Living as an, uh, the fourth webinar by uh, the TRS. So if you are interested in my talk, uh, shoot this uh, QR code, then you can see my movie uh, talk. And finally, uh, this is the first introductory part, and uh, finally, uh, this is my uh, one of the, my Indian uh, students, and he, he got the PhD last year, and he's Dr. Joshi, and graduated IIT DMJ and worked on, uh, under Professor Saha of IIT Delhi, and he joined my laboratory as a master's course student. And after that, he went up to the doctor's course student, and he got the, he successfully, uh, in three years in the doctoral course, he got the PhD. And now he's featured really good like this, and he's working in uh, a Japanese uh, startup company for robotics uh, in Aichi. So I'm very happy, you know, having having a, a very good student from India. So I had actually a lot of many Indian good Indian students already. And uh, please, I already chat, but uh, uh, just in case, you can download the handout from uh, this QR code. If you're interested in, please shoot this. Okay, this is outline, but I think you, I don't have much time. Uh, so I'd like to briefly introduce QTEC. So as uh, Ms. Taka mentioned, so it has already a hundred, more than hundred years, I, I think 112 years history uh, since it's founded. And it's in Kitakishu city. And again, I'm showing you a QR code here. And this is, this shows some, uh, I think a movie of Kitakishu city. So please, if you're interested in, please watch. So Kitakishu city is here. Uh, I mean, Fukui is here and Osaka, I mean, uh, Siga, Siga prefecture is here, here and uh, Tokyo here. And uh, Kitakishu city is 1.5 hours distance by air from Tokyo. And also it's close to, you know, so the, to the West we have uh, India. Yes, there, there is India. So we are so close to the Korea, China and also India. And you see uh, this big scenery from the, uh, you know, so a soul mountain, our soul mountain. And they, uh, there are, you know, so, so we are, are in, uh, and also you can see the sea here. So we are surrounded by the very nice mountain, green, and also the sea. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, good nature. And uh, QTEC has three campuses as well. And uh, we are, oh, 
And uh, sorry, so I maybe made some mistake, but this is my daughter. And the Kitakusha city has uh, its great, uh, beautiful um, castle. Again, you can, you can uh, of course, walk uh, around and walk inside the castle. And uh, it also has, it's, it's uh, you know, so the city has around a million people uh, population. So, and in the past, a lot more. So that's why uh, it's, uh, it has very nice facilities. Castles, not, all, not only castles, but also uh, museums and blah, blah, blah. So you, you can definitely enjoy, you know, so the urban life and also county life also uh, simultaneously. And uh, so I'm from this graduate school, graduate school uh, uh, of life science and systems engineering. And uh, basically speaking, we have three campuses. So there are, uh, you know, three schools and also uh, there is, so I'm uh, from this graduate school uh, focusing on research. So we didn't have undergraduate uh, basically. Yes. Although some uh, undergraduate students uh, want to be supervised by us. So, uh, and if you are interested in space engineering, so I think, you know, so Ms. Taka said uh, there are there a few uh, students, participants who are interested in engineering. So that's a little bit sad, but uh, uh, please, I, I really want to uh, show some movies that impress you. So you, I mean, that entertain you. And uh, so if you're interested in space engineering, you know, so this is a place. It's in Tobata and uh, you see some mini satellite here. And if my memory is correct, uh, QTEC actually launches, you know, uh, the, the maximum number of mini satellites, or, was, or I don't know how to say it actually, nano satellites or mini satellites, uh, at least in Japan and also maybe in, in the world also. Uh, sorry if my memory is not correct. And it's, uh, we are not a big uh, institute, so uh, that's why, uh, you know, so, uh, so in total, we have only, you know, 5,600 uh, students and uh, 300, uh, you know, 34 and three, uh, more than 300 international students uh, from uh, 42 countries, blah, 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 right? And uh, this is interesting, actually. So QTEC's uh, employability is, uh, you know, ranked one, I thought that, so it's really high. And, but uh, by watching the, the pre previous Fukui uh, University's presentation, I, now I find I need to check what's the difference <laughs> and uh, uh, what's the measure, you know? Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, so uh, we have very good uh, employment opportunities. And uh, so in the first tier one companies, but uh, we are also interested in, in starting up new companies also. Uh, Benja companies are here, uh, ranked 15 in Japan. Okay. And as well, as usual, so we have lots of, lots of, lots of partners and, uh, in the world and career support. Right, so as I told you, so there are so many, you know, so very popular names uh, of the Japanese companies. I gave you already the handout, please watch them carefully if you're interested in. And also many of you are interested in the, uh, you know, so the cost, uh, enrollment tuition uh, and other fees. And uh, it's there uh, on the handout too. Uh, if you're interested in, please watch it. And also I'm going to be, uh, introduce uh, our graduate school's uh, max scholarships but, uh, uh, you know, special programs. But uh, uh, in, in addition to that, as uh, other professor, fac fac uh, professors uh, mentioned already, yeah, there are many different types of uh, scholarships that you can get. It's on the hand, sorry. This is not the handout. So I forgot to uh, attach this to the handout. So if you are interested in, please shoot a video. Uh, sorry, uh, shoot the screen. Okay, and so let me move on to the introduction, brief introduction of our uh, graduate school. The name is Graduate School of Life Science and System Engineering, and uh, uh, consisting of two departments for the master's course and uh, uh, one department for uh, integrated one department uh, for the uh, doctoral course. And actually, you know, so here uh, you see the news. Uh, this is the uh, news. Uh, uh, sorry, cursor is not moving very well, but uh, this is, uh, please check this site. I'll let you know the uh, QR code too. And uh, we will call, every year we will call the mixed uh, for the applicants uh, to our uh, mixed scholastic course on robotics. 
right? And this is my student. So, so he got the best presentation award from the Robotics Society of Japan. So anyway, uh, this is a QR code. If you, you know, so uh, shoot the uh, code here, use the code here. This brings to you to this site. Ah, sorry. I'm sorry, maybe it's not working very well. Uh, maybe, wait. Mm, it's not working. Ah, uh, sorry. I don't know why, but. Uh, uh, are you not able to share your screen, Professor? Actually, PowerPoint is not working right now. No. So uh, uh, I don't know why. Please wait. Mm. So PowerPoint is not working. Mm. View slideshow. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, so now it starts working again. But maybe because of the movie, I think it sometimes freezes. It's very strange. I usually use this. Uh, so I'll, I'll skip the movie. Sorry. Yes, I'll, I'll share it again. Okay. Yeah, so let's let's keep this as I as I mentioned already. So we you know the sea is close in a, you know a fifteen minutes distance by car. Uh, but sorry, I think you know I can't change this change the slide. Okay, so let me change the strategy. This is bad. I'm sorry. Maybe my computer is already is screwed up. So. I will change. So, for, so I hope I can change the page. Okay. So, uh, can you see? Okay. Uh, yes, professor. Please. Okay. 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 So, uh, yeah. Due to the time limitation, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, briefly introduce the mixed class courses. Uh, there are two. So, actually, our graduate school have has two scholarship courses. Uh, so uh, one is my, you know, the one I, I've been managing. That's called uh, Advanced Assistive Robotics Course, Global AAR Course. And uh, if you are inter interested in robotics, intelligent robotics, uh, but not only that. So it also covers uh, various, you know, very uh, diverse fields such as integrated circuits, control sensing, nanosystems, artificial intelligence, IoT systems, behavioral, a science and neuroscience, actually. So we are interested in our department is actually interested in intelligence and intelligent systems. So if you are uh, inter interested in, you know, so uh, some of the keywords, so uh, please check. And also please visit this site, and we will call the uh, you know for uh, call for the application. I think it will start again. So if uh, next uh, works as usual. Uh, we will call start calling it from this uh, uh, November, I think. So please check the site. Okay. We also have uh, G2, D2, uh, G2E2 course, Global Green Energy and Electronics course. And uh, here is a QR code. If you're interested in, please visit. And uh, this course also uh, provides, I don't know, sorry. The keywords are, uh, I mean, green, clean, and sustainable growth. And some of, some of you are also interested in uh, not only electronics, but also chemi, right? So uh, chemistry, then uh, you should also uh, check this uh, course. And uh, so other keywords are printable photovoltaic cells, functional materials, and uh, the electronic mechanical devices, organic electronic devices, blah, blah, blah. Motor drive system also uh, is important for robotics. So if you're interested in play check. Okay, and and uh, because uh, you know you know uh, campus, so uh, there are uh, three different graduate schools are living together. One is Kitakyushu City University, and another is Waseda University Graduate School. So uh, we have joint course, 
and it's called uh, car electronics course and also uh, intelligent car robotics course. And uh, so we are collaborating. We uh, we are having, uh, you know, so we are sharing uh, the courses, and uh, also there is interesting uh, and opportunities to see to visit the companies. And the companies are uh, basically speaking Toyota, Nissan, so motor companies, Mazda, Denso, and also electronics companies, Denso, Icing, NEC, Toba, uh, Toshiba, and Yasukawa is a robotics company and Mitsubishi. Blah blah blah. Okay. So a uh, big chance to, if you are, if you join this course, there is a big chance, you know, so to, to have the, a special meeting with uh, those companies. And this is good. This works good for your, I think, uh, getting, getting employment. Yeah. So this slide just shows a lot of pictures. So uh, please feel uh, some, you know, so information, so impressions uh, of this course. Okay. So uh, not you know, electronics, car, mobility, and robotics. And blah blah blah, well, and, and offsite meeting. Okay, and uh, so I, I think I don't have much time, but uh, uh, so I would like to see. So we have in this campus, we have a great, you know, uh, student circle. Uh, this student circle won the first prize three times in the service robotics at RoboCup at home. So just I, I would like to give you some feeling. Okay, so this is a robot given by Toyota, and this is a platform. And uh, so many universities, and including other MIT and other, you know, so uh, foreign American and the foreign universities, and every year we competed, and uh, a student circle, this student circle won the first prize three times. Okay, so if you're interested in this kind of uh, service robotics and intelligent robotics, you should. And this is actually my work. So uh, I have my laboratory have been doing a lot of things, and uh, this is one of the representative one, and. Uh, uh, this is a, a dressing robot, actually, right? And uh, uh, featured a lot by media. And uh, actually, this is the work done by Joshi, Dr. Joshi, who was my uh, doctor course student. And uh, please, if you're interested in this work, please visit this QR code and you see our publication there. And this publication was actually awarded by the Robotics Society. Okay, so I think I still have three minutes and a little more. Yeah, and we also have a very good facility uh, regarding biomechanics and soft robotics. So I just show you some feeling. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, we have uh, very nice uh, human motion measurement devices and wearable devices, non wearable devices, right? And also uh, we have uh, very nice 3D printers and also uh, robotics devices. So you can enjoy rapid prototyping of some robots and sometimes hard robots or soft robots that can help people. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I need to skip. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, so, so here I would like to introduce the global, uh, so I, I, as, as I mentioned, there are two next scholarship special programs courses and here, I just uh, want to emphasize the global ARL course that I manage. Okay, so uh, this is again the QR code, and this brings you to this uh, website. Yeah, you can you can uh, see you will be able to see my call so soon in this uh, November. And the features of the global ARL course. So it's a abbreviation of advanced assistive robotics, and uh, so the aim is. You know, to develop intelligent systems or solutions that, uh, I mean, and also uh, resolve, you know, so to find out the solutions that enable, you know, increasing productivity and safety and decreasing labor load and patient pain and assisting motor skill learning and rehabilitation. So as I, as you, as you was, uh, you know, thinking, it's quite multidisciplinary. So uh, as I told you already, so it consists that, you know, uh, it's an integrated field of robotics and other, you know, fields. So, so if you're interested in robotics, and also if you're interested in uh, information engineering or computer science, you know, so you will fit uh, to this global course, right? And the members per year, so it's uh, uh, nine Japanese uh, and six, uh, three in master and three in doctor every year. And, uh, Right, so uh, in total six. So six students are selected. So among, so the it's quite competitive. The rate is, I think, you know, so uh, usually uh, we will uh, have 
uh, in the past 10 times, but uh, nowadays, uh, so we are not so advertising uh, this uh, course because uh, we, we don't want to have too much applications. But anyway, uh, it's competitive, but then uh, if we are selected, you can get a uh, you know, very nice uh, grant uh, from Max, and you don't need to pay for the tuition waiver because Max will pay for it. Okay, and course contents are English compatible classes. So you don't need to be a proficiency in, in Japanese and journal club to read latest papers and seminars with top-notch lecturers and practical in robot, uh, robot operating systems. Yeah, so please, uh, in detail, uh, see the handout. And uh, so I think I don't, I don't have time, uh, you know, so just a few minutes. Uh, I, need, I need to finish, sorry. Sorry, Ms. Taka. So I have no time to explain, so introduce my laboratory. Just I want, I want to stop here. So this is uh, the uh, current, uh, my students, the list of my students. And you see, you know, half of all, uh, roughly speaking, half of them are Japanese and half of them, uh, them are, are from uh, abroad. And actually uh, they are from eight nations. And we, I have uh, four female students and actually she's a medical doctor and she's nurse. Right, so uh, in, in this way, so my, uh, my laboratory is quite, has a, a very high diversity and uh, I have been uh, enjoying educating so international students. Okay, thank you very much. I, ha I have to stop here and thank you very much. And uh, I apologize for my you know, inconvenience and problem on the slide. Uh, no, that was, uh, it's, it's okay, Professor, that was not an issue. So thank you very much for your presentation. It was very detailed. Uh, we can go into the Q and A session. So, do you want me to select a few questions? Yes, yes, please. Uh, so, what is the level of Japanese required uh, for the undergraduate programs? Right, right. So, the, the the answer is the same with other universities. So, so for undergraduate, unfortunately, so the main major common language is Japanese, and uh, of course, uh, we have they have just the programs and exchange programs. Then you know, so uh, it, so uh, for them, so of course faculty members can give uh, some English uh, lectures, no problem, in the English practicums, but basically speaking, uh, Japanese is strictly required for uh, an undergraduate student. But in graduate school, of course, we don't need it. So actually in our laboratory, major common language is English. So that's why Japanese students have to study English a lot. Yes, yes. Thank you, Professor. And there's a question you have mentioned about the global AR, AAR program, right? Mm -hmm. So can students from Japan school get an admission into that program, a student who has studied in Japan? Uh, sorry, say it again. So I, uh, uh, you have mentioned about the global AAR the, program. Yes, yes. So a student who has studied in a school in Japan, can he get admission into that program? Right, right. So, Actually, uh, so this is a mixed scholarship pro program, special course. So that's why uh, the requirement, you know, so is uh, set up uh, from mixed, imposed by the mixed. I mean, it's a, it's a level. I mean, I mean, grade and also uh, English ability or Japanese ability, and that's all. And uh, so uh, you know, except those uh, measures, you know, so uh, parameters uh, imposed by mixed, it's the same. You know, how to enter. Kyushu Institute of Technology, right? Yes. So enrollment uh, process, procedure is the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, technician, so you have mentioned that there are mm -hmm. some doctors and nurses in your team. Mm -hmm. So um, what are the requirements? Do they have to know the Japanese language or is it easy for them to uh, uh, get no, 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 no. So for, for postdocs, you know, opportunities. So uh, you, you don't need to, you know, be the profession, you know, so in Japanese, not, nothing. So actually, so I'm not actually, you know, if you, if you look at, for example, if you look at my publication list, most of them are in English, not Japanese. So uh, yeah, so Japanese students always have to study how to write English journal and, uh, if, you know, how to communicate via English, right? Uh, anyway. Yeah, so, and the opportunity itself is of course dependent on, you know, so the faculty members, department, you know, and, and they, you know, and year by year, it depends on the, you know, so a grant acquisition, uh, I mean, depends on the grant acquisition situation, circumstance of each faculty member. 
So I cannot say, you know, so I have some, you know, so some number of the pool. I cannot say, sorry. Yes. Right? So, so you need to check the, uh, our, our uh, you know, our institute's homepage has always, the, you know, is calling, you know, some opportunities. So please check. Yes. yes. Also, if you're really interested in, you can contact, directly contact me. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you for your presentation, for thank answering the questions. So I think we can move on to the next university. Can we have the, can I have the agenda slide, please? Uh, so now we have uh, the last presentation of the day, that is the presentation by Kumamoto University. It is also one of the oldest national universities located in Kyushu region. It has many unique features with the motto of deepening knowledge in the fields of human science, social science and natural science, as well as promoting interdisciplinary research. So I invite Professor Kishida to provide us more details about the university and the admission process. Over. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good evening from Kumamoto. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers to give us this opportunity to introduce Kumamoto University. And thank you the audience for your being here to hear about Kumamoto University. My name is Mitsuyo Kishida. I'm from uh, Faculty of Advanced Science and Technology. So, okay, let's get started. I'll, I'll like to share my screen. All right. Uh, okay, here's the first slide. Uh, Kumamoto University is one of the national universities, you, um, and you can trace back its origin to even to the 18th century. The picture on the right shows the uh, historical building of the fifth high school, uh, which was built in 1989, which is from the former high, uh, higher educational system in Japan. So if you're on the campus, you can see some of uh, these old uh, red brick buildings. Uh, uh, just show this. Okay, so I, I, I guess you've been watching this uh, kind of slides many times today. And then we are in, uh, in Kyushu and then uh, island, southernmost island of Japan, and then we are in the capital uh, of the uh, Kumamoto prefecture, the Kumamoto city, which is actually on here. And the uh, population of the Kumamoto city is about uh, 740,000. And then you can fly to uh, Tokyo, it's, uh, it takes about 90 minutes. And uh, here and then I'll just tell you briefly about the um, what's the nature and the history of Kumamoto and then in downtown yeah we have a famous Kumamoto castle so it's one of the oldest almost uh, significant medieval castles it's a very popular place to visit and you can see the cherry blossoms and they're actually on the ground of the castles it's a lot of cherry trees and then it's a popular place to go visit you know in the spring to have picnics. And we also close to the mountain area and then Kumamoto is famous for this active volcano called Mount Aso. And then which has a very large caldera. And then I will show you next the, uh, actually the video clip uh, introducing Kumamoto city. And then one of the characteristics of Kumamoto city is uh, which is famous for the uh, good uh, groundwater. And then because of this big volcano, which erupted many years ago, which, which deposited uh, the thick layer of the, um, what they call it, pyroclastic flows. And then the rain poles go through this, that, that it, you know, the, the geological layer, which can hold a lot of water. So, it, which, you know, filtrates a good, you know, ground water. And then actually the 100% of the top water we use in the city is supplied by this groundwater. So it's really nice area. Uh, it takes about 
I think within one, one hour drive from the university, you can reach to this mountain area that you can enjoy the nature throughout the year. And also we have a nice uh, coast line and then this picture uh, on the right shows the uh, Amaksa area. So in here is a lot of small islands you can look at and then uh, actually a group of dolphins uh, living in the bay and then you can right, get a boat ride to see those dolphins. That's really interesting. And then also you can also enjoy the good seafood. All right. Uh, so now I'd like to show you the very short, uh, I think, few minutes of video clip to introduce Kumamoto City. Can I do this? Okay, I'll just stop. Okay, now I'll go back to the slide. Right, 
So uh, now I'm, like, I'm gonna explain about the university. Um, we have about 10,000 students, including undergraduate and graduate students. And then among them, we have about, uh, we have about 500 international students, probably from 40 countries and regions. And we have uh, 2,700 uh, faculty and staff members. Uh, and for the undergraduate studies, we have these faculties, um, faculty letters, faculty letters, education, law, science, medicine, pharmacy, and engineering. And then unfortunately, these uh, programs undergraduates are now all in Japanese. And for the graduate school, we have the graduate school of social and cultural sciences and education science and technology, medical sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, and health sciences. And then for the graduate uh, studies, we have some English-based uh, educational programs. Okay. And in uh, Kumamu City, we have uh, uh, those faculties and graduate schools are separated into uh, in three different campuses mainly. And then I'm in here right now, the main campus in uh, Kurokami. And then uh, the, in the video, well, you see the castles are here and then the downtown shopping areas around here. And then here is the pharmaceutical uh, schools. And then this is the uh, medical school, the university hospital, and then the uh, medical schools are here. So it is about, uh, to go to the downtown to the main campus, it's like, you know, every student will ride bicycles and then it's about 15 minutes, you know, bicycle ride. And then um, this is international house, like, uh, you know, university uh, dormitory. And then from here to the campus, it's probably 15 minutes of, you know, bicycle ride. So it's, uh, you know, uh, manageable size of the cities in the U. Of course, the buses and then trams, but then usually, you know, with the bicycles, you can get around easily. All right, so uh, in Kumamoto University is well connected globally, and then uh, we have a lot of partner universities abroad, about, you know, close to 300 uh, partner universities and institutes and in over 50 countries and regions. And then we also have overseas offices on in eight countries and regions. Um, just for your interest, the, the examples of the partner universities in your area and at the university level, uh, uh, partner University, we have uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, um, po Pokhara University in Nepal, the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh, of course. And then at the department level, Namala uh, University, uh, Manipal University, National Institute of Technology, Karnataka, Alba Institute of Engineering and Technology, Indian Institute of Science. Uh, what is this? Department of Aerospace Engineering, uh, Mangalore Institute of Technology Engineering, uh, Noakali Science and Technology uh, University. Uh, in my lab, actually, I have a student from Dhaka, well, I have the student from Dhaka or Noakali Science and Technology University. Uh, so maybe some of you might be uh, familiar with those universities where you're from. And so I'd like to introduce uh, briefly about some uh, advanced research we do uh, at, at Kumamoto University. But one of the, uh, but just only some of them characteristic research, we cannot, we don't have time to introduce all of them. And one is the um, Magnesium Research Center. Uh, it, a, group, a research group at Kumamoto University actually invented uh, innovative magnesium alloy, which is now called Kumadai magnesium alloy. And that which has a characteristic of very light and then very sturdy and then non-flammable characteristics. And then because of that, uh, uh, it improves fuel economy and controlling uh, carbon dioxide emission of the transport equipment such as airplane and cars. So it's very hopeful material uh, for these um, 
<clears throat> cars and airplanes, and then now it's a lot, lot of active research going on in the center. And next is uh, Institute of Industrial Nanomaterials. Actually, the, at the Graduate School of Science and Technology, a lot of groups are working on this and this nanomaterials. And that's in this uh, institute, uh, they uh, promote the research on the nanomaterial science and engineering from the theoretical studies to application. And then especially uh, one of the characteristic uh, studies there, the pulse power science. And then in this uh, field, they conduct uh, the, you know, uh, the re a world leading research and then using this little pulse power science is the energy source such as the plasma shock wave that create uh, when they apply the high you know, voltage uh, energy. And then from this, using that uh, energy, they can do a lot of things, synthesis the new materials. And then, uh, you know, to, from, to this application to uh, actually the uh, medical sciences like uh, treatment of the cancer. And then also uh, our university is the only university in Japan that has an integrated explosion experiment facility. So it's a very characteristic place. And, um, and for the medical world, uh, we have the Joint Research Center for Human Retroviral Infection. So Kumamoto University is actually famous for the AIDS research. And actually, we have the first university in Japan to set up a center for the AIDS research. And then now it's, uh, this center is established as a joint research center uh, with the Kagoshima University in 2019 to promote further research for eradicating refractory virus. Uh, so it's, you know, infectious diseases, including AIDS virus. Okay, and then also we have this Institute of Molecular Embryology and Genetics. And then here uh, they promote the integration of life and medical sciences from the viewpoint of developmental biology. And the Institute explores the mysteries of life by conducting cutting edge research on stem cells and organogenesis. Okay. And on uh, social science, we also have this, you know, characteristic research centers called the ASA Bunko Research Center. And ASA Bunko is the name of the foundation established to retain and care for ancestral works of art, literary uh, manuscripts, and other historical materials of the Hosokawa family, who were once the da daimyo of Kumamoto. So it's like a Lord uh, ruling this er area. So it's like a you know, local king of this area. And the collection includes over 100,000 pieces on almost every aspect of life in Japan during Edo period and represent the archives, one of the greatest daimyos. In 1964, some of them were entrusted to the library of Kumamoto University and now they're used for educational research as very valuable historical resources. Okay. All right, so for the, as an international student, how can, how, well, probably it's been mentioned many times today, but then we'll just briefly introduce it, how you can come to Kumamoto. And then if you are from the uh, partner university that I showed you in the previous slides, you can come as an exchange student uh, as a short-term exchange program. And also we prepare some uh, like a summer program, special program for the part undergraduate students from partner universities. And we also have a double degree program so a certain uh, partner university and then in the field of science and technology and the medical sciences. So these are the graduate programs. Um, and also we're going to talk a little bit about this English-based degree programs and we have that in the graduate school of science and technology and also graduate school of medical sciences. Uh, so for those uh, the English based degree program in graduate school science and technology, uh, technology we call it GSSD for short. Uh, we have a program called International Joint Education Program for Science and Technology, IJEP. 
and then we accept students who master and doctor courses in the field of science and engineering. So the all the uh, the research fields in, within this graduate school of science and technology, we can well, uh, take the international students who wants to study only in English. And also in the graduate school of medical sciences, uh, they have a program. Uh, on advanced research in infectious disease and AIDS, and then we just supported actually next scholarship, and then they can take the uh, doctoral students and uh, and they can study in English. Okay, and then the daily life and in, in Kumamoto, you can have uh, you can stay in the international house. Uh, at least the first six months after you arrive in Japan, and then the bus uh, at the monthly rate is 17,000 yen uh, for, for single room. And um, but you can, there are a lot of private apartments around campus, and then it's average of 40,000 yen per month. And then, you know, it depends on your, how, you know, how you live, but then you can make, uh, find a cheaper place probably. And also for a new uh, international student, we can assign a tutor to support uh, their life in Japan. And so that by the fellow student who's assigned as a tutor for you can help you with how to read Japanese and how to, you know, re um, register in the city hall and then things like that. And tuition here is, I think this is similar to all the national universities, but then for the uh, degree students, undergraduate graduate students, you have to pay the, you know, the entrance e uh, exam fees and the admission fees and tuitions and things like that. This is all expressed in Japanese yen. And also, if you do not enroll, but then you come as a research student, you, you know, uh, you can't do that, and then, but it uh, you have to pay this kind of fees for the research. And we call a research student, and then if you want, just want to take uh, classes. If you're not from the uh, a partner university, you that you have to pay this fee. Okay. And it might be earned some financial support. And then as in other universities, once you admit it to the university, you can apply for the tuition exemption. And then if your application accepted and then all of party tuition may be waived. And in the scholarships, and then Max, of course, is all you know, the Max scholarship, you can apply uh, for Max scholarship before coming to school uh, to, to Japan. And also after you admit it, there are other uh, scholarship from the, found, the various foundations and then you can apply for that, but you cannot apply for them before uh, admission to the university. So I think the max is more comprehensive and you can decide your scholarship before coming to Japan and maybe other governmental uh, scholarship or maybe something you can look for, but then this is a major uh, scholarship if you want to come to study in Japan, I think. And uh, for the, I will go very quickly because the time is passing. And uh, Japanese uh, government, or the next scholarship, well, of course, the problem, you know that one thing is you apply to Japanese embassy. And then the other one is university recommendation. And then you can apply to Kumamoto University directly. And then we have uh, one part is the general allocations. You can apply for this. Or we have a special program which is supported by the Met Scholarship. And then one is com in computer science and electrical engineering, but it actually uh, for certain nationalities, Indonesia, Myanmar, Malaysia, and Thailand, unfortunately, India is not included. And then for the AIDS research uh, in medical school, that, which is, I, there's no nationality, uh, nationality limitations, so you can apply for this if you're in this field. Okay. And probably I'll go this way quickly for the embassy recommendations. You can look for the information at the Japanese embassy. And then usually the, in the springtime, you can apply and then you get the first screening at the embassy. And then if you pass, you contact the Japanese university as for LA letter of acceptance. 
and then your final notice will come in January, February, and then you can come to Japan in April. I think there are choices, you April or October. And uh, for the GSSD, for if you want are interested in English program offered in Graduate School of Science and Technology, uh, we can accept students uh, either in April or October. So this is spring semester or the fall semester, we can access both masters and doctors and then application period is for October to November for April admission. And then uh, for October admission, you, you for the application period for the April to May. And then so you can, there's a contact uh, email address. And also the uh, medical school, you can apply for the April and October admission for the, the English uh, program. And uh, actually, uh, if you want to start in April, there's three times to for the admission, uh, for the application, and then one time for October. Okay. Uh, all right, so you can get the information, of course, from the university website. I think that's it, what I, okay, this is what I want to tell you. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope to see you in Kumamoto next time. Thank you very much. I'll accept questions. Uh, thank you, Professor, for doing your research and for giving us a detailed presentation. No, let's quickly look at one or two questions. And mm -hmm. So the, uh, is there any Japanese language requirement for the undergraduate programs? And yes, uh, right now all the programs undergraduates are done in Japanese, so you have to be able to, you know, <laughs> yeah. speak Japanese and understand Japanese, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, really, the, do students have yeah. to appear for any entrance exam? You mean for the undergraduate? Uh, for the uh, graduate programs. Graduate programs, uh, it depends. But the, there's an entrance, not written exam, not necessarily. And this, uh, for those, you, uh, you, like, you don't have to come to Japan and then with uh, with the application information, you can see that some usually do in, in, interviews, and then now easily you can do it on Zoom or you know TV interviews. But that's requirement. But uh, yeah, especially what I can tell you, so I check the uh, GSSD programs. We they, we don't get written exam, but then we have to have the interviews, and then all paper application. Uh, we we just review the application materials. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there any economics and commerce courses in the university? Mm, unfortunately, no. I think that if you can look at uh, the graduate school of the um, culture, uh, social sciences, called uh, social sciences, it, it depends. We don't have the department for that, but the, depending on the uh, you know, research field of individual professors, it may be something. You know, somebody might be doing something like that. Yes, uh, thank you, Professor, again, once again, for even answering the questions. So it was nice to have an overview of Kumoto University. Um, thank you. And so this brings us to the end of the webinar. So I appreciate all your patience and thank you for your continuous attention. Uh, we hope it gave you an overview of the application process into all these various universities in Japan. So for information about uh, more such universities and uh, scheduled webinars, please scan this QR code, which directs you to the University of Tokyo page and also for, for registering to the webinars. And uh, that's all for today. Thank you again for attending this session.